guys, this is a monumentous occasion. I am about to read my very first Stephen King novel. <laughs> I know, I know. Which book might I be picking for my first novel, you ask? Misery. <laughs> I feel like this isn't the obvious first choice. I was actually thinking I'd probably be reading Billy Summers for my first Stephen King novel. This seemed a lot more my speed, a little less like strong horror, tortury, you know, like this one. But of course, I did, you know, my TBR jar picks, my reads for the month, and it gave me a horror novel. <laughs> We got like a horror horror. That is how we found ourselves here. If you're gonna do Stephen King, I guess you just jump right into it, right? I mean, I didn't like completely jump into it. I'm not like, I'm not going this far. This, this will probably be like the last Stephen King book I read. It just looks so scary. Uh. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, if I'm being honest. But I am excited. This is like the classic reader is upset with a writer about the creative choices he's decided to make. And so she stalks him down and tortures him until he rewrites the story in a way that is pleasing to her. You know, as we all do. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all the writers out there. I have no intention of ever going that crazy because of your writing choices. Anyway, basically what the writer did that made this person so upset with him that she resorted to torturing him is he killed off the most popular protagonist in his beloved romance series to, you know, expand his creative horizons. I guess he got tired of writing about that protagonist, which I feel like there could have been other ways for him to go down a different path especially since this is a romance series that he was writing in, but I don't know the details of this man's, this writer's books. I don't know the plots. So I guess the, the title has multiple meanings. Misery because it is basically about him rewriting Misery's story, and misery because he is going to be in a lot of misery for this whole book. Anyways. <laughs> I'm rambling. We're gonna read this together today and I will tell you my thoughts and tell you if I'm going to read more Stephen King, which, I, <laughs> spoiler alert, I will. <laughs> So it's the next day. I actually I haven't really read anything. I've gotten like eight pages in. It is pretty fun so far, <laughs> is a word to describe it. We start off like right in the middle of this whole situation. He is in this woman's home, I assume. We really don't know anything yet. He's dr very drugged, very much in pain, but you know, he's so drugged that he can't really feel the extent <laughs> of the pain that he's in, wants to die kind of pain. Yeah, it's uh, pretty intense. At first I was thinking maybe this is like him right after the car crash, but, um, but no, it's him mid-torture. And the descriptions, the way he's describing it is really gross. I decided to wear my fun screamy socks today in honor of reading Stephen King horror. I thought it matched the vibe, so we got the socks, we're ready to go. I 
am now 60 pages into Misery. <laughs> it was kind of crazy. We're in his mind, right? So he is pumped full of painkillers because he was in a car accident and his legs are like all messed up and he's in a lot of pain. And he's not in the hospital, of course, because why would she send him to the hospital? She just has him locked in her house. Yeah, but he's pumped full of drugs, so it's kind of like, you know, wonky reading. You're not sure what's going on. Like, did the car accident just happen? Or is he, like, in the middle of being tortured by this nurse? Which it kind of... <laughs> the feeling it gives is torture. She only likes his misery books, which... Romance novels. And he also writes, like, other, like, more serious books. And... She does not appreciate when he does that, so. There's no knives involved or like the typical kind of torture that you would expect, but he is very clearly in a lot of pain and she does withhold the pain medication sometimes. <laughs> It's really funny what makes me laugh in this book because <laughs> it's all pretty horrible <laughs> like in terms of the situation I reached the hundred page mark and I told you I'd check in so <laughs> here I am our nurse in the story Annie who's you know kind of torturing this guy she gets mad a lot and she just got really upset at him because he thought he was being all smart and she saw right through him it was <laughs> kind of scary honestly like i could see what that would be like if it were in a movie and that would be a jump scare situation essentially it read as much like a jump scare as i feel like you can get i'm definitely speaking too soon because <laughs> there are definitely more jump scary jump scares in stephen king's books i just haven't gotten there yet but i think the reason why he can make something feel so much like a jump scare even when you're just like reading a page is because of how descriptive his writing is. I don't know if I've ever read anything more descriptive and it's done very well. You know, sometimes you read a book and it's just a little overwhelming and like flowery how much they're describing things. And it's kind of like, okay, we don't really care that much about the setting, you know, but he just like weaves the setting and the vivid descriptions into the story so seamlessly is very well done. And it's like very vivid descriptions, like the most precise language you can choose. Something else I wanted to mention was, you know, we're reading in the perspective of a writer and you can really tell that he is like a prolific writer. Like his thoughts it really feels like I'm in a writer's mind. Like, it kind of feels like I'm in Stephen King's mind, honestly. And, like, he thinks through all these situations in his head and, like, what would happen if he did one thing or the other. And he is so in tune with what is happening in this situation and what Annie is likely to do and what her, like, motives are. He thinks through how can I most improve my chances of getting out of this alive. And it's kind of fun to read. <laughs> I am very excited to see how this ends. It's not like a happy story, so I'm not really expecting a happy ending, but I would kind of hate for Annie to win in this situation, you know? It is a movie. I mean, I haven't seen the movie before, but like this image, I have totally seen. I fear that after reading this, it's my duty to watch the movie. I think I mentioned I'm not the biggest fan of horror movies. <laughs> like, they kind of scare me. <laughs> Believe it or not. Crazy thought. But I really feel like I should watch the movie after reading this. At least I'll know what happens, so maybe it'll be, like, not that scary. I think, I think that's how it works, right? <laughs> if you know what's coming, it's fine. <laughs> I 
love when there's humor in this situation. <laughs> It's funny, the book is funny, but the fact that I find it funny makes me laugh even more because just the whole situation. Like, am I really laughing? He is in so much pain and yet it's still funny. Not his pain, but like, honestly, it's his mind. Like he's like playing scenarios in his mind and they're very funny. That's what's happening right now. to page 157 i'm officially on part two of misery and we've just reached the part where paul has finally written a few chapters of misery's return you know where misery comes back from the dead and continues to live her happy-go-lucky life in love etc <laughs> i am really enjoying it so far like, I was a little worried about reading a horror novel. <laughs> Didn't know if I was up to it, but I mean, I really like thrillers, so I don't know why I thought it'd be any different. Honestly, when I was reading The Housemaid, there was a part in it that arguably may have been more disturbing than anything I've read in this so far. But to be fair, we <laughs> aren't even halfway through. Um, I guess the more disturbing bits are in the second half of the book but we'll see <laughs> i don't know why i was scared to read horror like i love thrillers i love books about serial killers why would i not like this that's also stephen king so like that might have something to do with it <laughs> he's just a really good writer so there are a lot of bathroom scenes though i've been keeping track we've had three so far <laughs> three bathroom scenes which is surprising because you know normally in a book there are no bathroom scenes it's kind of like do these characters even need to go to the bathroom ever but they do in this one i'm so stupid for a second i forgot that i was reading like what he wrote about misery's return and not this book and i was like well this is this has taken a surprising turn like, <laughs> there are other people? Is he gonna be freed? No, we're just reading his fictional work in this fictional book. I'm so stupid. One last thing, I also want to mention that Stephen King really pays attention to the details. At the very beginning, or not the very beginning, but like, you know, once it was announced that the nurse was going to force Paul to write this novel, bringing misery back to life, she got him like a typewriter, of course, and one of the letters that, that on the typewriter, the N was missing so like it doesn't work and when you read like what he's writing in the book every time it has like this little different n typed character because he has to manually go back and write the n and so every n in these paragraphs that he's written on the typewriter has that like different font and <laughs> it's the details the details
we are officially halfway through not much has changed since i last updated you i've been looking at this cover like wondering when the axe comes in i'm a little worried about this <laughs> i must say when i looked up the movie i think i remember seeing her holding an axe I haven't gotten there yet. I don't know what part that's at. It might be near the end. Ooh. I just saw a part near the end where it's like handwritten something or other. That's exciting. I love the different fonts. The attention to detail is really like... I know I've said that already, but reading this you slowly see all the possible ways that she could torture him and it's always like when he's doing something we know he's not supposed to be doing and he knows he's not supposed to be doing and it's just like a constant fear of oh man she's gonna come back and she's gonna see you trying to escape or trying to you know get like food or pain medications you know when she's not around and she is gonna punish you she is gonna torture you so bad <laughs> like no torture we've ever seen before you're gonna wish you were dead and of course while we're like thinking that we see all of the ways she could torture him like the axe in the backyard or you know the cellar door with the rats in the basement you know constantly scratching away probably would try to eat him alive so you know she's in like her depressive episode now i guess so she's like zoning out more and like acting more creepy and I feel like we're getting more into the horror. Like, there was definitely torture before, but like now, I'm seeing more how this is, how it could be even more horror, you know? What we've read so far was not horror. This is horror. Stephen King just paints such vivid images, such, such vivid horrific images i just i just can't i'm almost done misery i only have like 60 pages left and <laughs> it's been getting pretty intense it's been so like so intense and gory that like like my heart's been like pounding like constantly like it's honestly kind of hard to breathe this is it <laughs> i can't believe she just did that this woman is even crazier than I thought. I mean, not that I didn't think she would go there, but you know, when she does, it's like, oh no, <laughs> why? I wanna finish it today, I'm hoping. I don't have like a ton of time, but I have more than an hour. So I'm gonna go over there. out for revenge guys I have finished my first Stephen King book I almost don't know what to rate this because like, I feel like it's so well written and it was a very exciting read. <laughs> very much I'm on the edge of my seat, kind of terrified, like kind of heart pounding constantly. I can barely breathe. I can do nothing but read this book kind of vibe. Like I couldn't physically read any other book other than this one <laughs> until I was done. Even like I tried, I just, I couldn't. <laughs> I think I'm still sitting at like a four and a half 
just because like I, just, I don't know how i feel am i satisfied am i satisfied with the, the ending <sighs> i don't i mean obviously not exactly a happy ending the ending it did have a jump scare like it was absolutely terrifying <sighs> Stephen King is a very good writer though. That is like beyond a shadow of a doubt, high quality writing. And you know, like you read excerpts of this guy Paul's writing, well, just Misery's Return. It's kind of interesting having those excerpts in there because I was partially like, <laughs> I don't know if I like this book, <laughs> like this, the excerpts he's writing. Like you get little snippets and I'm like, what is going on in this book he's writing? <laughs> it is the most absurd thing. <laughs> And also, like, kind of mirrors his life in, in the sense that, um, you know, he's being tortured and going crazy, and his book turns pretty dark. So that's fun. But I'm like... And the ending of this was so, like... You know, it's his, like, point of view and him... He's kind of gone crazy by the end, you know? And so it's kind of hard to tell, like, what's real and what's not. So it's... It's very confusing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this happened? Like, no, no, it didn't. This, no, wrong again. It was very good though, yeah. I'm I'm gonna leave at four and a half stars for now. Do I wanna read this again? No, not really. <laughs> I've been through enough trauma. <laughs> oh my goodness. But like, was this very good? Yes. <laughs> Would I recommend this to someone who like, wouldn't be absolutely horrified? Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, yep. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching me just go crazy reading this book and being traumatized and having fun, but also slowly dying inside. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.